My name is Sarah Tulaney. I'm a breast medical oncologist at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So while we know that trastuzumab has added tremendous benefits to our patients with early stage HER2 positive breast cancer, the original pivotal trials that had really examined the benefits of trastuzumab in this setting had predominantly excluded those patients who had smaller node negative HER2 positive cancers. And so that's been a challenge for us because if you look, for example, at historical series that have looked at untreated patients with node negative HER2 positive cancers, Unfortunately, they're still at risk for recurrence. So untreated patients can have a risk as high as 20 to 25%, even with the stage one HER2 positive cancer, really suggesting that these patients do need systemic therapy. And yet our pivotal studies had excluded them. And so our group had really felt that it was important to try to examine how to optimally treat this group of early stage patients. So we had created this trial called the APT trial, which had looked at this abbreviated chemotherapy regimen. So people got paclitaxel with trastuzumab for 12 weeks and then nine months of trastuzumab therapy so that they got a total year of treatment. And it was a single arm trial, so not a randomized study, I'm really just trying to show that if we give this regimen, did we see a clinically acceptable outcome and certainly better than what we would have seen in an untreated patient population. And we've previously reported data from this study initially with three years of follow-up then with seven years of follow-up. And now at San Antonio, we're presenting the data that was the official final 10-year analysis from the APT trial. And what it showed was that at 10 years, um, with a median of 10 years of follow-up, there were actually very few recurrences. So if you looked, for example, the invasive disease-free survival at 10 years is about 91%. But what I think is really important to note is if you look at recurrence-free interval, it's over 96%. And there are only six distant recurrences. And so very important when you look at a low risk, relatively lower risk population, people can have other events that count as invasive disease-free survival events. So people can die for other reasons. For example, they can develop new contralateral breast cancers that are unrelated to their initial cancer. So that's why I think recurrence-free interval is probably a better endpoint to look at in these, again, lower risk kind of de-escalation trials. Um, so seeing these data with you know, over 96% RFI with only six distant events, I think really confirms that the TH regimen should be a standard option for the majority of our patients with stage one cancers. So we were really look, looking to see if there was a biomarker assay that could help us select those patients who were likely to recur on the TH regimen compared to those patients who had excellent outcomes. And there's this assay, the HER2DX assay, which is really based on gene expression of the tumor. And we've seen other work with this assay that shows that it has multiple uh, benefits. It can predict PCR. It can also predict prognosis uh, in someone with a HER2 positive cancer. So it in fact gives you three different scores, uh, PCR probability, prognostic information, and ERBB2 score. And because this was an adjuvant trial, obviously the PCR score isn't so relevant here, uh, but what we were looking at was a prognostic score. And there is a cutoff with this assay. So they use 50, so people above 50 tend to have high risk, people below 50 tend to have low risk. And so you could see that when you looked at this score as a continuous number, that it very much correlated with outcomes in the study. And it also showed that people who had high scores were more likely to recur than people with low score scores. And we also tried to develop a more optimal cut point with this assay in this particular stage one population. And so we did look at it a different cutoff different than the one that's standardly been utilized uh, and found that it was even better able to predict outcome. And so I think these data are, are very intriguing and I think an important step towards trying to personalize therapy for our early stage patients, certainly it needs validation. But I think the ultimate goal that I'd like to see is being able to use a biomarker assay like this to help us predict maybe in the future, who doesn't even need systemic therapy because their prognosis is just so good, especially with these small, super small HER2 positive tumors where they probably don't even need systemic treatment. 
which patients where TH is just perfect for them and using it will lead to them being cured of their breast cancer, but then also be able to select those super high risk patients where maybe TH isn't adequate and enough for them. Um, and maybe those are the patients we need to escalate to potentially more standard regimen. So, you know, I think more work to come with this, but I think it's a very important step in moving us in the right direction because we've really not been looking at biology. We've just been looking at clinical pathologic risk, which we know is not enough. Uh, and as we get more and more HER2 directed therapies in the early disease space, I think we are going to need a way to personalize treatment to give the patient the right amount of therapy. So I think we're, what we're seeing now with 10 years of follow-up from the APT trial is very low risk of recurrence with the TH regimen for a stage one HER2 positive population with only six distant events, um, suggesting that TH is a very reasonable treatment option for the majority of our stage one patients and that we have some promising biomarker assays like HER2DX, which hopefully will help us better personalize therapy for these patients in the future.